The stratigraphic record of sedimentary basins records the tectonics of those basins. So in this presentation, let's see how we can read this record specifically to understand the history of faulting in rift basins. So let's start off by some simple cartoons to establish a framework. So here we have a succession of rocks before any fault slip. So the faults are going to be planar and rotational and they move like that and as they move these yellow rocks have been deposited on top. They incrementally show the history of slip and rotation. So show a growth fan where the beds become steeper with depth. And then after faulting, we have a succession of rocks deposited on top. These successions we call mega sequences. We have a pre rift mega sequence which was deposited before any faulting, a post rift mega sequence deposited after all the faulting, and in between, a package of rocks deposited during faulting called sin rift. These mega sequences are separated by unconformities. So let's think about how we might assign these mega sequences. The pre rift strata are simple, so any variations are at a length scale that are not associated with the faults. And of course, these units are faulted. The post rift strata were deposited after faulting, so they're unfaulted, and they stratigraphically seal or overlap the fault blocks. And the sin rift strata shows an upward decrease in deformation because the oldest part of that succession has seen most deformation, therefore is in this case most rotated. The youngest have seen hardly any fault slip at all, so therefore are hardly rotated. So classically, these show these growth fans. But in practice, it can be quite difficult to pick the base and the top of the sin rift because they're almost parallel to the pre and post rift successions. So let's go back to the seismic section and try and spot the mega sequences in there. We have to interpret the stratigraphic packages. Here we go. So let's have a look at the pre rift through there. You can see it's faulted, but if you look at the thickness variations in these two units that we picked out, that there is very little variation, the thickness is more or less maintained. The variations that do occur happen at, at a length scale that's greater than the individual fault blocks. Let's put on some post rift and we can see that this younger part of the post rift is a simple drape that sags across the whole basin area. Let's put on some sin rift and you can see that this package changes thickness across the fault blocks and the faults obviously cut it. And this is also mostly post rift, though as you can see, it's quite difficult to pick it from the surrounding mega sequences. Let's zoom in, and you can perhaps see that the blue horizon in there does indeed, across this fault block, show thickness variations and shows deformation that decreases upwards through its own package. So that's also sin rift there. So the strata give us timing of faults. And you can notice in this basin, not all the faults are the same age. So on the right hand side of the diagram, which is the fault structure we were just looking at, you can see that we have a blue sin rift package that has dropped into the half gravel on that fault, whereas elsewhere the blue seems to seal quite a lot of the faults. So strata give timing on the faulting. Well, this cartoon that we used to set the problem up is somewhat idealised. Let's explore some other geometries. So down at the bottom there we have a situation where the sin rift stage is so-called underfilled. In other words, the sedimentation did not keep pace with the faulting. In this case, the residual bit of the basin is filled after the faults have moved by post rift strata. And these can be discriminated from the sin rift and pre rift by onlap of those post rift strata onto the older rocks. Another complication is that there can be erosion associated with this process, not just deposition. The erosion is likely to concentrate on the crest of the fault blocks, which get milled down, as we can see here, so that the pre-rift strata are truncated. 
So we generate a composite surface for the base of the post rift, in part an erosional unconformity across the crest of the fault blocks, and in part the fault surface. So let's also look at what happens if there's no sedimentation at all during rifting. This may occur because there's no sediment flux into this part of the basin or that the faulting is so fast that it outpaces any sediment. In the case here, we've simply got post-rift strata onlapping directly the pre-rift. And in this situation, faulting was accompanied by erosion. So we have a truncational erosional unconformity at the base of the post-rift and the pre-rift and the faults are simply planed off by that unconformity. So these are some of the architectures that are commonly found in different rift basins. So how can we use this to establish faulting information? Well, the best situation occurs where there's a full sin rift record and the deposition has kept pace with faulting so we can work out the duration and a detailed record of the rate of faulting. In underfilled basins, the record we can use to deduce faulting depends really on the amount of deposition that's going on, but we have some information on the rift phase. If there's no sin rift, then the best we can do is to bracket the age of the faulting from the youngest rocks preserved in the pre-rift phase and the oldest rocks of the post-rift phase, but we have no information of the actual rift phase itself. So we've seen some of the classical stratigraphic relationships that we find in rift basins, and they're the key to understanding basin structure and its tectonic evolution.